This one is called Kung Fu. Kick them out. Who says I don't know to enter position? Kick them out. Who they disturb your life? Kick them out. Your first insurance of success. Kick them out. Kick them Kung Fu. Let's go.
Take us up to the end, please. And if you haven't got one, please sit in back and we'll get one to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you all, please, while we're getting that done, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please, I would love you all to please stand up as we welcome the man himself, the man who is going to break down all the barriers that we've experienced in the last 58 years, the man who's going to make a difference in Nigerian politics, the man who's going to make Nigeria be seen in a different light than it have always been seen around the world, a man who's going to give Nigeria back the respect that they deserve. A man who's going to change our lives and all the lives of the people in Nigeria. I'd love you all to please give a warm AAC welcome to the future presidential candidate for 2019, Mr. Omoyele Showare. AAC! Take it back! Ashon! AAC! Take it back! Ashon! Started as uh, uh, the movement, which is the taking back movement, is called the Kenyan political party. Uh, two months ago, and the rest of you who have made it possible, and those who are attending, giving the time, everything they could have been doing on a Friday night to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I came here not to give a long speech because I found out just as I was on my way here, that I've answered, I've been asked over 5,000 questions. And I've answered over 5,000, I've given over 5,000 answers. Three months, within eight months that we've done this, we've been asked every question pertaining to how to fix Nigeria, I've given a direct, correct, accurate, laconic, and precise answer. 
to them. And nobody has been able to force it. To the extent that we're the first of, in the history of Nigeria to have been everywhere where you can find Nigerians, both at home and abroad. We've been to 30 states inside of Nigeria, 30 states. I wow. visited over 70 places inside of Nigeria in the last eight months. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Action. So, also outside of Nigeria, we've done almost 70 events as well outside of Nigeria. And I mean, if you are running for the presidency of Nigeria and you find yourself in Australia, you know it's a serious matter. <laughs> <laughs> not only did I find myself in Australia, for the first time, I was fed with kangaroo meat in, uh, in Australia. And, I mean, it tastes very good, I tell you that. Uh, and we did four cities in Australia about two weeks ago. And head back, you know, we headed back to Nigeria and done several events, several things. We've done TV shows, done radio shows. On a regular basis, we also uh, had to attend to our own shows, we do regular live streaming on Facebook, AY does zone. We have a number of persons who are out there because we do not have the kind of resource and the contact and the leverage that two, the two other major candidates have within the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. One of the candidates uh, who has made a habit of looting Nigeria shipped over 400 people to Dubai a few weeks ago just so that they can plan how to make Nigeria become a paradise for thieves. That was what they went to plan in Dubai. And uh, the other one, who is lifeless, is also allocating about one to two billion dollars already for this election. And so far, we haven't even raised up to two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, Group for me is still not up to two hundred thousand uh, dollars. Uh, our local account is still moving around 30 million uh, but we have been able to reach everywhere in a way that is surprising to them. They don't know how we're doing it. Uh, they've asked, well, they didn't even ask. At the beginning they said, well, these guys will soon be out of steam. They won't take long. Some predicted two weeks. Uh, after that, they said, okay, we know that uh, you are serious. Go and present us with a manifesto. You presented the manifesto that has to try and point at the end of how to bring Nigeria back to life. Because Nigeria is practically dead. Ladies and gentlemen. And they can't force it. After that, they said, okay, go and bring us a political party. Of course, while we were looking for political parties, they went and bought all the political parties that we were talking to. The PDP, but all the political parties we're talking to into what they call COP, C-U-P-P, you know, which we call COP of Sorrow. Yes. And the moment they discovered that we couldn't, they couldn't trap us within that system, nobody has ever heard about COP ever since then. They paid an average of 50 million naira each to everybody who joined COP, according to World Air. This is money that they stole from Nigeria, right? After that didn't happen, they invited us to come and join a group known as PACT. It's a presidential aspirants coming together. We got there, I told them that you don't need presidential aspirants coming together, you need presidential candidates coming together. They got upset, we left. That also did not uh, trap us. They tried everything possible they can. And then eventually, we had and got the political party, uh, political party registered. The moment we came out with the party, they started complaining about the logo, that it was not well designed, as far as they are concerned. When they got over the logo, they started asking us if we have structure anywhere. And we kept telling them that, tell us the structure of PDP anywhere. Nobody could show us PDP structure, because we don't have any structure. Tell us the structure of APC. Nobody can show us
model parts to you know assassinate and kill people. And when we're able to prove that they have no structure, they now start accusing us of having no experience. And we broke it down to them. But tell us the experience that Atiku had in 1992 when he ran for the presidency for the first time. He was 42 years old with no degree of any discernible nature. So, what about Buhari? When Buhari came for the first time in 1983, he was 42 or 45 years old. So, which experience did he, did he, did this guy have? Nobody could defend that. Anyways, I'm telling you all of this because we've been through all of the motions, and everybody now has come to a position where truth has become self-evident, and. Finally, everybody is discussing. So, it's looking likely that these guys are serious. And it is looking likely that they can win this election. It is looking likely that they can debate. Because at the time, and I'm breaking this down to you, not to complicate the long speech. At the time, they even started challenging us. They said, oh, you know, the other young candidates have, you know, one of them is an intellectual. And speak English very well. The world is too speak smart, you know. And then one day they pushed the one they said was the smartest to us on TV, PBC. <laughs> By the time he was eviscerated, they said, oh, maybe the world has something up there too, you know. It is just to tell you that we have been there all around. On the streets, we are the most popular in Nigeria. There's no question about it. On radio, nobody can match our ideas. On television, we also look sometimes very telegenic, right? And now, the questions keep coming. Now, the country finally is ready to come to terms with the future of possibilities. posters on their own. We just send them a JPEG, you know, version, and they're printing posters and mass and pasting the posters everywhere they can find. People are doing grassroots mobilization on their own, going to houses, churches, schools, they're going to town hall meetings. Traditional rulers are holding meetings in their kingdom and saying, look, if you don't vote for this guy, you know, I'm going to cuss you out. In some cases, yes. Uh, we don't encourage that, but the most powerful ones are those of you who are abroad, who are telling your people at home that if you don't change their day, they are not sending money to you anymore. Yes. And that is sinking in for a lot of people. You know, we read them on the road and say, ah, what did you tell my brother? He said, you know, we don't send money and we don't go to Well, the thing is that we could keep our money too and go on vacation with them. We can use them to do other things. But Nigeria has been so destroyed that without your input, Nigeria probably would not be in existence today. The country of Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen, this might sound very terrible news to you, is a country that has failed completely. Nigeria is a failed state. That is the truth and that is the hard reality. And except we accept that as the prevailing truth. Okay. Yes. So, except we accept that reality, okay. yes, we won't be able to fix the problem. Okay. And it will start for those of you 
who don't travel too deeply into Nigeria, but travel into Nigeria, it starts from the airport, right? There is no airport that I have been to in the course of traveling around in recent times that is as terrible as Nigerian airports. None. And I mean, we've been to a lot of African countries in the course of doing this campaign. Just, uh, I saw somewhere yesterday, pockets. even Rwanda now has a digitalized border between Rwanda and the Congo. You have to okay. do fingerprints to get across the border. Nigeria, Nigeria cannot boast of a highway between Benin Republic and Lagos, but I agree. It's the worst. If you go to our schools, oh, you don't want to think about it. Last week, I went on a train ride in Lagos. Probably you guys have seen some of the video uh, footage from that. You cannot transport pigs. No, I'm serious. If you transport pigs in those trains, the animal rights people will shut it down. <laughs> the windows are blown out completely. The thing is very, very hot, dingy and muggy, but there are thousands of people who are traveling in those trains. In fact, the guys who we met at Yaba said, oh, if you had come to Ijoko, which is the commencement of the train ride, that you wouldn't have found space because people have to stay on top of the train as well. When the inside is filled up, then people sit on top of the train in Lagos to move from point A to B. So, to fix this, our party, the African Action Congress, is introduced, has introduced 10 point agenda. You know, I don't want to call it an agenda because that's something you are used to from the old guards or the old cargoes. But this is our digital response to bring Nigeria on par with other countries around the world, to bring Nigeria and move it in the path of direction and direction of prosperity, progress, and peace. And we call it Spicer Heat. Now that is to say for Nigeria to even start moving in any direction at all. Nigerians must feel safe within Nigeria. So security is our number one priority. But nobody's safe in Nigeria right now. Number two, power. Electricity, number two, I mean, three, infrastructure, fighting corruption, anti corruption. E, there, which is the spicer, is the economy. R is uh, restructuring. H is health. Education is E, A, agriculture, and tourism. These things are things we are going to do at the same time for Nigeria to reach that space where. All of you can start thinking about having your next vacation in Nigeria. Start from next year where we take you back. So what am I telling you is that we are ready. We came ready for this even before we got the political party. In fact, we are so ready that if we have our way. We will encourage them to just hand over power to us so that we we'll start fixing the country before the elections. Yes. Right? Yes. But there's just no constitutional framework for that. Yes. But we can win this election very early if we can encourage a lot of our compatriots across the world to help support our dream, to help support our aspirations for a better Nigeria, uh, to help us pull Nigeria out of oblivion into in nation states that can make the proud man, I'm sorry, that can make the black man proud once again. Uh, having said that, I have a lot of questions here. And uh, with your permission, I can start to deal with some of them. Not all of it, because still, we have plenty of questions here. Uh, but I, I will make some attempts at answering some of the questions. Yes, maybe I'll start with the last one that just came. Uh, and this one is about the Limoshow local government said it's big and used especially in the three essays would love for you to come and engage with them. This is our best song, Go on and Shagari Estate. Absolutely. 
That's not the question, it's a suggestion. It's well taken. I'll put suggestion on this side. Uh, I need to share a strategy to change the status of GoFundMe, of the GoFundMe figure. Okay, that's a suggestion. How do we get the mainstream television to talk more about your candidacy? How impossible is it to organize a two million man match in each state zone? We need to get to commit to updating our social media uh, profiles with show rest campaign picture. Suggestion, we'll take that. I hope you guys are listening. Yes, sir. Youth unemployment is one of the chronic issues affecting our country. What strategies do you have to address it? Strategy is one, to secure the country. We have security, but most importantly, our intervention policy, in the, I mean policies in the past sector alone, we employ over two million people. What, what do we mean? When we come to Nigeria, where we electrify Nigeria by bringing in immediately 24,000 megawatts of electricity, which can be done in two and a half years. And if you doubt that it can be done in two and a half years, you probably have read that Egypt just finished 17,000 megawatts in the last two years. It didn't take any, uh, any magic to do it. It just took commitment, it took focus, it took innovation. And what was innovative about it? The combined solar, right? Combined gas, biomass or biogas, and they combined whatever they could find that could generate electricity, including cow dung, you know, dirt on the street. And all of these projects they embarked upon in two years, 17,000 megawatts of electricity. Morocco is generating over 4,500 megawatts of electricity from solar energy. The same thing, yes, the same thing with Tunisia. This is no longer difficult to do. But you, when you don't have leaders who even understand how the rest of the world is moving along, it will be difficult for them to figure out how to do anything. Three days ago, as I was going to mention, if you go to my Facebook page, I have a video there that I just uploaded on my way here. Uh, thank you, sir. And it was about the Black House at the Muritala Mohammed International Airport that lasted for 45 minutes. So people are arriving, and they arrived there, and they, as their bags were coming out, there was no electricity. They were using hand to carry bag across to people. You know, I mean, one is not safe to be operating at an airport in that. Secondly, it's a shame that in 2018 we cannot light up our airport to the point that we can successfully move bags on the aircraft to their owners. When I came to London, before I finished the immigration protocol, my bags were out. I came to Manchester, as soon as I got out of the plane, my bags were out. Nobody's, but in Nigeria, if you arrive at the airport, it probably take two hours sometimes. Worst thing is that they can't even air condition, I mean, there's no air conditioning at the arrival. So you have to start sweating it out from there. One pilot, the pilot who brought us on Virgin Atlantic today, said he couldn't power one of his engines. They had four engines in the uh, A340 airplane. And he said something that was, you know, both annoying but, you know, also true. He said, well, I'm asking to bring an additional, because the, the airplane was hot. And he said, there's a generator that is supposed to be on the ground to power the air conditioning of the plane when, when the plane is not, when the engines are not active. He said, I've asked them to bring an additional engine. But knowing Lagos, knowing Nigeria, he said, this might take a while. And lo and behold, it took us an hour before we could take off from there because that engine that they needed probably took them another 30 minutes to find it. It's, it's, it's just an impossible place. And to start to make it work, we have to find new people, new hands, fresh ideas. Take a seat, take, take it back. back. Take it back, action. Take a seat, take it back. Take it back, action. So to this question about unemployment, apart from electricity, the infrastructure that we want to bring to bear on Nigeria, we're not fixing our airports fixing the railway system, our schools, it's also going to bring about 
another two to three million jobs. Uh, and also the agricultural revolution that we want to bring to bear on Nigeria, the diversification of the economy that we have been planning inside of our minds will bring almost five to six million jobs right there within two years. And that's where all the young people will find work. Right now, the only job available for young people is election toggling. So everybody's getting set now for election. They are sharpening their knives and machetes. And you know, yes, and they are buying them guns and bullets. They are importing uniforms, uni military uniforms into the country for the election. After the election, all these young people have to wait for another four years. While they are waiting, they engage in kidnapping, arm robbery, because they have to survive somehow. So that the country must break from this very vicious cycle of unemployment and the denigration and the degradation of its youth. And it's, it's just something that will happen when we get electricity. There's a lot of innovative young people in the country, even in the technological arena. If you know what Nigerians are doing in terms of inventions, you won't believe it. Now they have their own payment systems that that competes favorably with pay, uh, PayPal. You know, they, there's also a Nigerian version of GoFundMe. But at the end of the day, as hard as these kids might try, they don't have electricity. They don't have you know. They don't have broadband. The phone companies are ripping them off. You know, when people fall sick in Nigeria, they can't find hospitals to go to. You know, you want to do something, but the country is doing you in each time you try to do something. So the moment we get it right, the leadership that inspire, we get a lot of things happening. You guys will be surprised. I'm telling you, Nigeria is just waiting for that moment to turn on the switch. And the moment you reset the button, and we get out of the default mode that we have been permanently in, Nigeria will become a nation that even you guys will be wondering, oh, wasn't I sitting around with Shore last year here? And things are already working. Do you know? Take it back. Take it back. And you know why? The reason why I'm very optimistic and confident that this will happen is also the way our political movement started. If anybody said to most people that after eight months, we become the most talked about political movement in Nigeria's history, nobody will believe it. So that tells you that after next, this time, by this time next year, it would be a different system for the country. Yes. And we will still be able to come here as well because this time around, we will not be parting very hard. We will be shipping you guys to come and help at home. Yes. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. And the good news is that a lot of Nigerians who are out here want to help for free. Because most of us are tired of staying here anyways. That's true. No, it's true. Man. If you do a poll of how many Nigerians want to go back home, it will be almost the whole house. So, no worry. Uh, and by then, too, we'll have our own airline. The real one, not, not the real one. Somebody asked that Nigeria has experienced a serious threat to its national security with loss of lives across the country over these few years. How do, you, do your government plan to restore security in our country? I mentioned it and I've answered this question a thousand times. The reason why Nigeria is so insecure is because the security agencies don't want to secure Nigeria. Nigeria is the only country in the world where security agencies work against the security of people. Yes. I said it at the time and people were like alarmed. And I said if I become president, a lot of generals will get fired. There's no looking back. I know them personally haven't worked as a reporter. You know, when you find a general who is building mansions at the time that people are dying in, you know, uh, in the hands of Boko Haram and kidnappers and, and headsmen. You know that they don't want the war to end. They are the ones prolonging the insurgency that you are seeing in the country. In fact, 
I researched as a reporter showed that in every conflict that's lasted for more than two years in Nigeria, army generals or security agencies are supplying weapons directly to militants. They did it in the Niger Delta. They were shipping weapons from Kaduna to, to militants in the Niger Delta region, selling them. So these, are, these things are not new. When we come in, we'll get rid of all of them. There's no question about this. And bring in security agencies who are willing and patriotic to make Nigeria a safe country. But that also would include that we incentivize them, it will include training and include proper equipment. I, I say to everyone with due respect, if you get to Nigeria where police refuse to collect bribe, Nigeria will start changing from that day. When you say, look, I'm offering you bribe and he handcuffs you, because bribery is a very serious offense here, right? And people will say, look, the police don't collect bribe anymore. So, before you put a vehicle on the road, you have to consider whether it's roadworthy or not, whether it has insurance, and before you know it, accidents will reduce on our highways. Before you know it, even armed robbery will cease, because to rob, you know that it will be difficult for you to kidnap somebody from Kaduna and then drive a person to, to worry, and nobody will ask you on the road. Because the police will no longer be smiling anymore. They are doing their job, but they are well paid to do it. They have the equipment, they have the vehicles. If they can't catch up with a the criminal, they can get a helicopter to follow up until the person is caught. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria is not big and Nigeria is not complicated. But if they want to press the panic button inside of you, they will tell you that Nigeria is complicated. My response has been simple. If Nigeria is complicated as a claim, why is it so easy to steal from Nigeria? <laughs> what I understand about complicated system is that it's very difficult to navigate through them. But you say something is complicated and somebody will steal one billion dollars from the place. Nothing will happen. That's not a complicated system. That's a basket case right there. Or oh, is it Nigeria is big? What made Nigeria big is because Nigeria is not integrated. You can hardly find 30 kilometers of highway in Nigeria that you can ride uninhibited. No, I've traveled in Nigeria, across Nigeria in the last few months. If you go up to 20 kilometers, you hit a crater, you know, or a pothole, or something. There will be something that is there, or the, the, the road will suddenly just end abruptly. <laughs> you know, in the middle of nowhere. So, it's the kind of country that they created. This is the country that the Buharis created. This is the country that the Articles created. This is the country, the Nigeria of today is the Nigeria of their dream. AAC, take it back. Take it back, action. AAC, take it back. Take it back, action. Nigeria of their dream is Nigeria of our own nightmare. Yes. It is time that we create the Nigeria of our dream, which will be their own nightmare. Yeah. And the reason it will be their own nightmare is that they will be shocked that this is Nigeria that they have enslaved, that has broken free from them. And I say with due respect, I don't wish them bad, but I feel like if Nigeria starts to be okay, so many of these old cargoes will start dying off one by one because they will have no place in a decent Nigeria. But in the Nigeria of today, that is under, they are under lockdown, they are surviving, they love it. This is the Nigeria where they live forever. You see, if you look at Nigeria, there's a paradox there. Bad people live long in Nigeria. Good people don't last in Nigeria. There's something wrong with a country like that. So we need to change that narrative, we need to change that paradox and create a Nigeria where every one of us with good intention can live long in it. You know, I just feel that, you know, this is possible. I, I say to people all the time that a brand new Nigeria is possible. Yes. 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 It's completely possible because I was around in the last 10 years. I studied as Dubai became what it became. Maybe in the last 20 years. I left Nigeria in 1999. I've never heard about Dubai when I left Nigeria in 1999. I started hearing about Dubai around 2005. 
and now one of the best places. I started hearing about Rwanda. Went through war, 20 years war. You go to Rwanda today, if you drop your wallet, you come back the next day, you meet it there. It's the, it has the cleanest city in the world. Okay, if you don't want to think about that, go to Ghana. In fact, when I did the train visitation, the, the, the bottom of the train in Yaba, we did the video and compared with Kenya, compared with South Africa and Ghana. All of them are better than us. In 2018, we have not even included Ethiopia. Ethiopia, Ethiopia is building a train, I think a train line to Kenya now. And it's probably going to be the best. They already have a trust city train system. And we're struggling. But guess what? Which is very painful. You know, if you say Nigeria is bad and you want to fix it, the first people that will come against you are people who are, are the, who are the victims of the terrible Nigeria. Yes. Even on Facebook, yes. the first people to defend the bad Nigeria are all these young guys yes. who are suffering. Yes. And you're asking, is there any problem with you? Yes. you know, what do you benefit? What do you benefit from this Nigeria that you come and defend and say that eh, I say, no, we have train at all, half bread is better than no. Somebody will tell you that Rome was not built in a day. And I answer one of them was Rome built forever? Yes. And she has been under construction for eternity. Yes. If Rome was built that way, we wouldn't know Rome today now. In fact, Nigeria has been around for, contrary to our own position, Nigeria has been around for 100 years. Since 19, it's more than 100 years. So 1950, uh, 1960 was when Nigeria was granted independence. But as a national entity, whatever you want to call it, it has been around since 1914, when the Southern and Northern Protectorate were combined together. And so many of the infrastructure you see in Nigeria today were some of the infrastructure that were created around that period. Nothing new. Nothing new. Even some of our friends on Facebook who try very hard to go and say that roads have been constructed. They can never present to you a finished road. It's the ones that are under construction that they do. You know, I say, what is wrong? Why are we always under construction? In 1989, we're under construction. 1999, we're under construction. 2019, we are going to be under construction. When are we going to finish Lagos about an expressway? That I, I, I knew about that road, not the construction now, but the fixing of the road. It's been on for 20 years. We just traveled yes, we just traveled there four days ago. They still haven't been able to finish it. But when you are passing the place, you will know that nobody is doing construction. Because you will still see you know a caterpillar, as they call it, there. One single one. You know, and maybe two. And sometimes when you look at the equipment very critically, you know that the equipments that are there are not for road construction, it's just for decoration. Yes. Because on our way here, uh, one of our colleagues was driving said, oh, there was nothing here in this Manchester two, two years ago. But now there are buildings everywhere. There's construction. Even as we were coming here, there's construction happening at night. You know, in Nigeria, if you don't see that, you just hear that the contract has been awarded. It's a country of contractors without builders. That's the truth. <laughs> Everybody just collect their contracts, collect the mobilization fee, disappear until another government shows up, they get another contract. Same place. <laughs> Youth, particularly university students, age constitutes formidable full soldiers in this election. Are you doing enough to galvanize them into this project? Of course, yes. Uh, we went to IFE, Abakemi Awolo University, four days ago. Massive, massive. Uh, Attendance of our rally there. We had about 3,000 people, students, attend our rally. Uh, so it's, we, we have the support of students and we are going to visit more, more universities as we go along. But you know, the, the government of the day, the moment they become too popular on campus, they close down the universities until the election. They, they don't care about academics. Uh, <coughs> Say, so what economy is changing fast and moving to digital era? What plans do you have to step up Nigeria to meet with other countries leading in the modern, leading in modern economy? I just mentioned also digital production. When I mean digital production, I'm saying that if you look at the world today, 
the first five most valuable companies in the world are companies that are dealing in technology. But Nigeria is still living in the past. We are still relying on oil, crude oil. Some of you must have heard the biggest controversy around our candidacy. When one day I told them that forget about oil, start thinking progressively. You are growing cannabis in Nigeria. Ah, they said, you want to be selling wee wee. This guy is crazy. You know? But while we were at it, it was as if that clairvoyance came too early. Canada, about two, about a month ago, uh, legalized marijuana. Two weeks later, 70 they need seventy percent of what they need is not available. Imagine that we're already a player in the game. That is four billion dollars right there, it's just to supply Canada seventy percent of their needs. You must have seen a young lady today that accosted me at the airport that became a little controversy. She stopped me, she worked with me before uh, on Sahara FM when we were still, when we had an offering of a radio, an online radio. And she said, I cannot believe that there's a Nigerian who is bold enough to tell the truth about the value of cannabis. She showed me a vape of cannabis. She said, this is, I sell it 36,000 Naira. Just one. And the people buying it are not regular people, politicians. He says, all these bishops, politicians, pastors, doctors. He so says, look at the people I'm selling this thing. Yes! 36,000 naira is how much you sell. Well, not pastor, you say, it's kind of like a natural oil. Yes. You just take a vape of it and, you know, Comes in that. It's the kind of thing that Coca Cola is trying to buy from Aurora. That they pay them four billion. So, but nobody is taking progressively to know that look, this might just be the oil that you have been looking for right there. And Nigeria has the best. <laughs> they call it cannabis ataiba. That particular brand that is grown in Nigeria is the best. And they started asking me, do you smoke? I don't smoke, but I don't have to smoke to understand that cannabis can cure cancer. It's being used right now to is the best cure for epilepsy, right? But Nigeria, if a child falls down, you know, if a child is epileptic and falls down in school, they start beating the child. Yes, they'll be beating the feet of the child back to life instead of administering what is now known as the best medicine. So. We need thinkers as well, you know. Our leaders don't think and they have no capability. The memory space, you know, the operating system cannot cope with the future that we are looking for. Take it back. Take it back. Action. Take it back. Take it back. Action. Somebody asked, how do we make elections? Make sure elections are not rigged. You can only rig elections of people who want the elections to be rigged. You see, let me tell you, when young people are involved in an election, it's the most difficult election to rig. And we are seeing a lot of young people who have indicated that this is their own election because it's their future that is at stake. And if anybody is going to rig the election, I don't even want to tell the person the consequences of rigging an election that in which young people have interest. But this is not the first time they will rig the election in Nigeria and the thing backfired on them. In 2015, the group that read the election the most lost the election. That was the PDP. And in 2019, the group that knows, to, knows how to do C and buy, which is the APC, will lose this election. I have no doubt about it. Jose, can you tell us about the issues of the uh, of FIFA's Palace? I have answered this question too many times. <laughs> but the better way to answer it is the visit of uh, Prince Charles to Nigeria. To 
those are the people that you want me to go and be prostrating for. They are prostrating for a prince. Kings that are prostrating for princes. They are worried about me prostrating to them. Look, this thing is simple. Our future is not tied to how many people to whom we can genuflect or prostrate. It's tied to those who are willing to stand with us into the future. I have nothing against the honor of FIFA. And I've said it that that issue is past and in the past. What happened has been explained, it was life. And uh, as a result, I don't want to waste my time discussing the issue. We even went back to Ife, Ile Ife, before we went to the university. We had more supporters in Ile Ife four days ago than we had when we visited the other of Ife. So that tells you something. Uh, so what is the abuse about reducing exchange rates? I have talked about the change rates so many times. Uh, you know, the problem with the change rates is that we have too many exchange rates. Yeah. There are about four or five of them. They, are, they have exchange rates for pilgrims. They have exchange rates for arm robbers. They have exchange rates for money launderers. There's exchange rates for students. We have to harmonize all of that. But the most important thing is that we must engage in production so that we can increase the value of our currency. We can show up the value of our currency is the only solution to this problem. Except we are able to address that. Forget about exchange rates. And talking about pilgrimage, one of the things that we do as president of Nigeria is not to invest a dime in sending anybody to either Mecca or India. It's a shame that Zafara State sends over a thousand five hundred people to Mecca every year, but they only have twenty-five students writing jam. Yes, that's the truth. It is one priority all over the place. I have no problem with religion, but I hope that people will keep it private. Yes, yes. What's your views about? Uh, you say, tell us about your degrees. You want to kill the other candidates. <laughs> if my, my answer is that if you put my degree on Atiku and uh, Buhari, they won't be able to stand until after the election. <laughs> so I have a, yes, I have a WAIC. No, no, I have a WASC. It's a West African school certificate. Then I have a BSc. That is the Bachelor of Science in Geography and Planning. And I have an MPA, Masters in Public Administration from all of these things, all of these degrees came from notable universities. Uh, the University of Lagos. I don't want the rest of you to go to your life to feel bad. Yeah. And uh, Columbia University in New York. And I heard that our 76 year old ancestor, Buhari, is still looking for his own certificate from YF. And I said it as if I repeat here. Buhari's certificate is not with YF. It's with Cambridge University. <laughs> and they have indicated to him that any time he's ready to collect it, he should collect it. And I'm here now in the UK. I can help you pick it up and drop it with him <laughs> on my way back. The man simply did not write any high school exam. Otherwise, he would not be looking for a certificate where it doesn't exist. Uh, so those are my qualifications. Very, I'm overqualified by Nigerian standards to be president. Have you see finally formed uh, a coalition because time is running out? What is your stand on LGBT? Finally. Uh, say you need to accuse you of something on that the first show. Please try and go to the radio station. Okay. So it's a formative coalition. The biggest coalition in Nigeria today is AAC. We call ourselves Zone 7. We are a coalition of the disenfranchised, the abused, the violated. And all of those things that happen to Nigerians out of the mainstream, 
that's the coalition. The AAC serves the coalition of the women people of Nigeria who are fighting towards revamping Nigeria with a revolution. Uh, so what is my stand on LGBT? I have said it that Nigeria has no business deciding who people sleep with in their bedrooms. Nigeria has no business sending anybody to jail simply because of their sexual choices or orientation. And it will not be the job of our government when we have rules to construct, we have schools to build, to now be sending police to be going to people's house. It used to be a man or a woman, you know. In a country where senators, governors are sleeping with 13-year-old people, which is against our own laws, and nobody is implementing and fighting them. You are, you, are, you are planning to jail somebody for 14 years simply because of their choice in life. Everybody that has decided to exercise their rights in a way that is universally accepted will be respected within our borders as well. It's as simple as that. I don't get involved in this argument because, as you guys know, they are always looking for excuses to say, oh, he has come again. Uh, he wants to turn Nigeria into Sodom and Gomorrah. As if Nigeria did not exist before Sodom and Gomorrah. Nigeria is today's Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's not because people are gay, it's because people are corrupt. Yes, Nigerian leaders are morally bankrupt, corrupt, and they do, in fact, most of them are actually also gay. Yes. yes. So many of these leaders that are talking about homosexuality, they are gay. Some of them are gay, they are bisexual, they are everything. There's nothing you can think of in this world that they don't practice in Nigeria, I mean Nigeria leaders. With regards to Eunice, I do not waste my time discussing individuals. We have a political party. We have issues to trash out, not people who are who have personal opinions or differences with me. It is their fundamental rights to hold opinions that are different from mine. They can say that the radio station, that the TV station, please, I support it. But I've uh, checked and there's nothing concrete about those uh, accusations. What is your view on the Nigerian Constitution? I've always said that the Nigerian Constitution is a fraudulent document created by the military. And uh, it is not and has never been legitimized or validated by Nigerian people. One of the things we do when we come to office is to change that constitution completely. Uh, and make it go through and make it go through a memorandum, uh, sorry, a referendum. Uh, so that it will become a legitimate document that every Nigerian can be proud of or can use to defend their rights or whatever they think is necessary. It will be a document that will define even what they call restructuring of Nigeria. But first and foremost, that document must be of the Nigerian people, by the Nigerian people, and owned by the people of Nigeria. How do you tackle the problem of unemployment? We just talked about it. Sir, how many government positions have you held because Nigeria is beyond theories and ideas on paper and mouth. I have never held a government position before because Nigeria doesn't have a government. So the people that are holding positions are not holding governmental positions. You guys know how governments look like. Have you seen it in Nigeria? But I've held a lot of leadership positions, including being a student leader, being an entrepreneur, being a moral global voice, being an environmentalist, and I've done so many things in the last 30 years that nobody today who is contesting for the presidency of Nigeria can boast of that many things that I've done, even though I'm the youngest, I'm almost one of the youngest among all the contestants. Maybe I'm not the youngest, but one of the youngest. 
And even amongst our peers who are running, we ask them simple questions. Yes. Were you not here when they were fighting for June 12th? They said they were around. What did you do? Nothing. Were you not here when they removed petroleum subsidy? They said they were here. Where were you? What did you do? Nothing. But I have been part of every battle that has been fought to save the soul of Nigeria. A.A.C. Take it back. Take it back. Action. A.A.C. Take it back. Take it back. Action. My question is about the entertainment industry in Nigeria. So what will you do to support young, talented Nigerians who are suffering and on the ground to find their way into, the, into their dreams and sustainable structure for those who have made their way into the industry? Well, the entertainment industry is a very, very important industry for us because that industry is what is sustaining Nigeria like they now. In fact, our entertainers are the only legitimate ambassadors of the country, anywhere you go today. So we do everything we can to encourage more talents to come out of Nigeria. We invest in institutions that make those things possible. We end the censorship of talents and ideas in the country. One of the things I want to end is that government agency that tells you which song is good or bad. Yeah? Because there are no bad songs, as far as I know. Because people can't sing bad songs. People who don't have, who don't know how to sing, cannot make songs. The moment the song comes out, it's never bad. So, but also, there are financial incentives that needs to be out, that we can have out of, you know, in the country for people who have ideas in the entertainment industry so that they don't die with their talents. A lot of people are out there who could have made Nigeria even a better place. There's no kind of song, any genre of song today that you can't find in Nigeria. The Nigerian movie industry brought Nigeria to the map of the world when Nigerian government leaders were failing Nigeria. So everything will be done. Everything will be done to sustain the, you know, the entertainment spirit of Nigeria and the entertainment industry. And this is an opportunity to call on all the people in the entertainment industry who want to see a different future to support AAC and support our candidature. Because a lot of them are also hanging around hoping that they can collect money from Atiku and Buhari to sing for them. A lot of people, if they are not careful, those entertainers, their careers will die with this next election. No, it's true. It happened during Abacha's time. It took Shino Peters a long time to recover after he sang for Abacha. He never really recovered. Yeah. So, we are watching the entertainers that this is not a threat. We are the consumers of entertainment content. If they think they can take Nigerians for granted that they are our, at this hour of need, well, they will hear from Nigerians very soon. Uh, The North uh, have enough voting strength. Therefore, how do you want to carry out your campaign in that area? You just heard that our vice presidential candidate is from Jigawa State. And after we introduced him to the world, he has gone back to start working with young people in the North. What is, that, what is very exciting, uh, so that you know, is that even the North, they are more interested in in new Nigeria than most people think. Yes, they want a Nigeria where they can be free of poverty. All those amateurs that you are hearing about, they want to go to real schools. Not others who are engaging in agriculture. They want to double and triple their, their production. In fact, a state in the north it's the only state that is viable in Nigeria today, apart from the oil producing states, and I think it's Kebbi. They are growing rice. Last year alone, Kebbi made more than 50 billion naira from rice. Yes, that is northern Nigeria. They got just one state. And everybody else is waiting for oil peanuts from Abuja, and from Abuja. So, the north is ready 
to return back to real agriculture. They are ready to go back to school. They are ready to have great hospitals. They are ready to have great roads. They are ready to be part of a new economy and a new future as well. And they are ready to vote out the two old cargoes from the north because Buhari is not helping any Northerner. Atiku has never helped any Northerner before. Atiku has a university in the north. No Northerner can afford to go to the university. Yes. American, uh, what is, I don't know the full meaning of the university, ABTU. That's no Northerner, no average Northerner can afford to go to his school. The water that he's selling from the north is natural water that's coming out that he's tapping and selling to the poor people of the north. So, how do you expect Northerners to vote for such a person? <laughs> so, they know these people already that they are the perpetrators of poverty, not the elevators of poverty. And Northerners are ready for them. And they have embraced us. You, you have seen some of their our clips traveling in the north on YouTube and uh, Facebook. They have embraced us the way we never even thought they could embrace us. Take it, take it back. Take it back. Take it back. So you are asking us about like minds. Uh, that we, we have involved a lot of like minds and I don't even I don't know where to start. But we have a lot of like minded Nigerians within Nigeria and outside of Nigeria who are part of the movement. This movement has grown faster than any movement that I know in a long time. Uh, that's the reason why you guys are sitting down here this time of the night on Friday. Uh, and we don't have any plan to go anywhere anytime soon. That tells something. A-A-C! Yeah. Nobody asked me, do you believe in restructuring? Of course I do. Absolutely do. But not the restructuring that is going to be done by the old guards. I have said it several times. If you think Buhari is too old to be the next president of Nigeria, you should also be worried about the old people who are clamoring for restructuring. The question they ask in broken English in Nigeria, we say, we should be their own for restructuring. Somebody will be 84 years old. What does he want to restructure Nigeria for? When you are global to close out to, to your grave, you should be restructuring your grave. Not, you should be restructuring the burial ground where you want to sleep for eternity. Not the Nigeria that you destroyed when you were younger. Our kind of restructuring first is going to be economic. The empowerment of Nigerian young people is the first restructuring that must happen. In fact, the empowerment is such that it's political. When young people become the president of Nigeria, become ministers, governors, then they will meet together and decide on how to restructure Nigeria. But the Nigeria that is going to be restructured by a 79-year-old man in Afeni Ferry, how is it going to look like? Is it going to be digital or analog? What strategies do you want to employ to revive the economy? Because we've answered this before. We always said it and I repeat it here, without electricity, forget economy. Without security, forget economy. Without infrastructure, forget economy. If this event was happening in Lagos, and the party here was somewhere in Uju Elegba, and I arrived at the airport at the time I arrived. By this time, I wouldn't have been able to reach this place. And this is a, this is something that's supposed to not last more than 15 minutes, driving from Lagos Airport to Uju Elegba. But there's no way in Lagos we could have reached there at the same time we reached there. What is the difference? Infrastructure. We even met traffic on the way, but we didn't. I think there was an accident. Before we got there, they had cleared the accident. The road was free. If there's an accident of that nature in Lagos, now tomorrow, it's, we won't be able to pass that place until tomorrow. It's, it's unbelievable. So to revive the economy, 
you need to get in the game of production. But before you can produce, you need electricity, you need infrastructure, you need security. You see, this is that simple, you know? Yes. Yeah, I'm impressed with your story, but do you think campaign oversee we have any influence on the outcome of election? Absolutely. In fact, if there's any reason why our campaign is so effective, it's because it has put an overseas and local dimension, the diaspora and local dimension working as a safe party for soon. As well as made that. Otherwise, we have no single advertisement in any TV station in Nigeria. We have no single jingle on radio, but there's nowhere you get to. People stop us on the road and say, Mr. Shore, how is it that I got a call from my brother in America about you? Eh? So the conversation is going on. People are calling people at home. Not those ones who are planning to impose sanctions on their families if they don't vote. It's also the diaspora that forced a lot of people to get their PVC. Yes, and a lot of diaspora people have also gone home to get their own PVCs and plan to go back home to vote as well. So, it's, it's, it's infinite in terms of the value that this whole local and overseas uh, events are taking uh, on us. And other people have tried it. It's just not easy for them. Because they don't have a strategy on how to engage the diaspora. You saw a thing we brought him to what's that place in uh, London? Are you been there too? Chatham House. In the middle of the conversation, his uh, battery died. The transmission went off. They had to bring a uh, Raymond Mockery to come and restart his uh, brain in the middle of the conversation. So they cannot even come to the diaspora because, look, already we have already answered about 20 questions. And I didn't open book. This one is from up here. How can Buhari do that? How can Atiku do that? Take it back. Take it back. Asha. So when elected, how do you guide against being impeached by the Senate if you don't have enough prep by the Senate. We are getting elected to leave Nigeria. I am not planning to be elected as a Senate president. And I have said it before that if Nigeria finds a great leader, every other person will fall in line. Yes. Senators, House of Rep members, Therefore, like Nigeria cannot be afraid of them or continue to be afraid of them. They are supposed to be working for Nigeria. Nigeria cannot be working for them perpetually. So, please, don't worry about that. The moment we get to war and we are building roads, bridges, train, you know, uh, railway lines and uh, modern, a modern nation is being built, forget about any Senate that is not working. People will recall them. In fact, maybe in the middle of the whole thing, people say they don't even want a Senate anymore. <laughs> Abrogate the Senate. Whatever the people want is what will become supreme and must prevail. Don't worry about them, but just so that you know, we also have candidates in AAC for senatorial positions, governorship positions, House of Representative positions, and also State House of Assemblies in the next election. We just submitted all the forms uh, to INEC. We have over, I think we have almost 10 senators. And I asked a question the other day that in Nigeria, do you know 10 senators that are doing, that are working in the interest of Nigeria? No. You can't find 10 Nigerian senators that are working in the interest of Nigeria. In fact, it's difficult to point to one senator in Nigeria today that is fighting for Nigerians. They are only fighting for their pocket and allowances. This 13, 13 million. One of them even had the audacity last week to say that that 13 million naira is too small for them. Yes. Yes, it was in the newspapers. And these are the people that are saying that 30,000 naira is too much, is too much for, for Nigerian workers. Criminals. 
We are students and are still at the very back of the room, very given ordinary water. I feel this is very rude and segregated like this. They said there are some students at the back of the room who said that. Is it here or? No, it's not here. It's not here. Yeah. Was that a different? Okay. Where do you see Nigeria in 10 years and when do you see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years, my entire hair will be green. Right? I would have worked so hard. But, you know, in 10 years as well, Nigeria would have become such a great country that all of us can be proud of. In 10 years, we will remember this day with nostalgia. Now we are part of history. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Next, President, sir, what are the strategies we are planning to boost economic growth if we eventually get there? Answered. What are your plans to boost economic growth? How do you intend to reduce unemployment? Already answered. What is your take or stand on the current minimum wage? It's not enough. Our minimum wage proposal is 100,000 Naira per month. And we have done our research and figured it out. And in fact, we should be ashamed of paying people $200 per month. When unemployed people in Turkey are taking home $600 per month. In Turkey, that, in, this was announced last week. Anybody above the age of 65 in Turkey is entitled to take home $600 per month. In Australia, every two weeks, an unemployed person is paid $600. Every month, they collect $1,200 unemployed. So our minimum wage of even 100000 naira is a shameful amount of uh, money, but it's a good starting point. And I just read on my way here, the governor of Gombe said that Gombe State, which is not an oil producing state, can afford 66,000 naira minimum wage. On my way here, I just read it. Gombe State said they can afford 66,000 naira minimum Nigeria definitely can afford 100,000 naira minimum wage. In fact, right now, we are giving money to people who are not working and underpaid people who are working. Most Nigerian senators don't go to work more than once a week. They take home 13.5 million naira every month. If you want to have an idea of how bad these guys are, we created a salary comparison tool on, my, on our website, Showrate 2019. You can go in there and compare your salary to that of a Nigerian senator. One guy who is receiving, I think, if you are receiving 100,000, it will take you seven years to make the amount of money that the senator is making per month in Nigeria. If you are collecting minimum wage of 18,000, it will take you 30 something years to make the amount of money that the Nigerian senator is making per month. We have reduced this to a science. I don't know what uh, to ask. But you have answer the but please get a United Front for Nigeria. This is Triple J Bedford. Thank you, Triple J. Sir, I want you to give an outline of plans to make you part of the government. Answer this so many times. This is the government of the youth. And it's going to be for young people as well. The moment we are elected into office, you will never hear of a chief of staff who is 76 years old. It's not possible. We are, going to, we are going to appoint young people to man the country. And then we'll take care of our old people. No doubt about it. They, they deserve our support and care. Yes. We will institutionalize social security. What is the possibility of future coalition with other political parties? Open. We are attending a meeting next week for to explore those possibilities. But that will not stop our own. Because we are already a coalition of uh, the willing. 
Going by the way Nigeria government is being run, how do you tend to affect change or changes through the election next year? How do you intend to cover all forms of my practices using cases of Australia and the key to the election as a case study? Again, we are mobilizing people to become conscious, educated, and prepared to confront, see, and buy, which is what happened in Oshun and Ekiti. I say it and I repeat it here. The party that won the election in Ekiti in 2014 did not win the presidential election. That's the PDP. So I'm making a prediction to you that the party that won Ekiti and Oshun, which is the APC this year, through fraud, we don't win the presidential election next year. Our party will win the election next year. Politics is like going to war and these strategies. What are the strategies to beat and demoralize the act of breaking of elections? I'll say here that I've spoken a lot about this, but something is important to tell you for those who are asking the same question. Nobody what is sought will reveal all his strategies at once, in advance. So some of the strategies will keep to our chest. If we don't win this coming election, what will be your next plan towards the realization of a better Nigeria? We need a revolution. Do you agree with this? Yes, we need a revolution. Somebody asked me, are you running for election now or are we doing a revolution? I said, whichever one comes first. Mr. Lee, please, uh, could you contact Mommy Esther Board, our brother, to provide support advice for a political campaign? I think I heard about that before. He's a very interesting person. Elisha, are you going to ban the use of generator in Nigeria? The moment we provide electricity, the generator will ban itself. How are you going to ensure that history is part of the curriculum in schools? Uh, they say our youth are very ignorant. We only need to listen to them on social media to understand this. Article was implicated in money laundering charges in 2010 by a Senate committee in the US. Yes, some youth are still campaigning for it. Well, that's the reason we should have been teaching history. Uh, but the people who are articulating actually know history. But they decide to ignore it because of their own selfish interests. Uh, there are some people who are working for people who are professors. You cannot tell me that the Nigerian professors don't know history. They know history, but they are manipulating history. But history will not be kind to them. Religion is one of the problems holding Nigeria back. Yes, it is a very sensitive topic. How do you plan to tackle this influence change in belief? Accidents happen, people start praying not to be involved. But nobody talks about solving the causes of accidents. It's true, religion is a very, very sensitive topic in Nigeria. But you know we have been dealing with topics since we started campaigning as well. Because we are campaigning religiously as well. Uh, but the fact is that, look, and I'm saying this to those of you who are watching and listening. If you leave Nigeria and you live outside of Nigeria just for one year and you still keep going to church, you know that even your prayer points are different. <laughs> Because in the Nigerian church on Sunday, you have to go and pray to God to provide transformers for your neighborhood or for never to bring lights. But when you travel to places like Manchester, your prayer point is how do I pay my electricity bills? Somebody said, I saw a video of you at the airport with the officials trying to extort you. That's similar experience too. What will you do to clean up corruption at the airport? Technology will do it. 
So look, you, you use me as an example. They used to extort, they used to ask me for money, they never extorted me because I don't give. Uh, so I keep recording them and now I've reached a point where they say, when they see me, I'm not like I get camera, they cry about it. <laughs> Keep your secret camera, and they, where they ask you for money. They, if everybody started uploading their experience, they will not do it again because they have families, you know. They have, and they get fired the moment it becomes public, they lose the job. So, just your cell phone is the most powerful too. Just set it up. Okay, how it be now? If you have something for us, no, I don't have anything for you. Why don't you have something for us? Because you are not supposed to be begging people who are traveling abroad. And if anything happens after that, when you are done, just upload it on YouTube or Facebook. That's it. The career don't finish with that. As a teacher in the UK, it amazes me how the curriculum changes every few years to move with the trend and development. What plans do you have for the current budgeted? I'm, I'm sure you are talking about outdated curriculum in Nigeria. It can't be applied to today. Let me tell you my small story. A friend of mine said, passed very well in Nigeria. I think he had the first class. Went to the US and he tried to teach in the US. U.S. College. He think he did chemical engineering, but when he left Nigeria, he was still doing IU Park. You guys know IU Park, right? When he go to the U.S., students were teaching him, his students. So, it's just to show to you the very, very urgent necessity to do our education curriculum. It's, it's, it's not only outdated, it's obsolete and archaic. I'm also a teacher, I've taught for eight years in the US. And I tell you, Nigeria to tomorrow, the curriculum is still dependent on cramming and doing final exams. Whereas other schools around the world are more interested in what you learn in class, how you participate, and how you attend classes. That's why an average Nigerian student, instead of reading their books, they'll be looking for Babalao to give them a pen to hold in a pocket. Nobody does that anymore. <laughs> a lot of things, we need to change a lot of things, ladies and gentlemen, about Nigeria. But it has to start with the leadership. You see, you cannot change the curriculum of education when the leader of the country is not educated. That is the truth. You must have a level of education that will help you understand how the world is changing. We don't have those kind of leaders today in Nigeria, unfortunately. Uh, part of your strategy's focus is infrastructure. Which infrastructure will take priority once you are elected? This one even did multiple choice for me. Power, energy, water, wastewater, railway, light rail, wireless technology, broadband, drainage, flood defense. Well, it will be power, energy, one. Railway, light rail, two. Wireless technology, broadband technology, definitely. Uh, Drainage, sanitation, and all the trends, definitely. Uh, water and wastewater is for me sanitation. So, all of the above. Talk about corruption. How do you hope to stop it when you get into power within the higher chamber? In terms of education, what are the strategies you hope to put in, into the structure? What will you do to equip Nigeria's education with that of the United Kingdom? Thanks, Ojuko, Peter. So corruption, there's no big deal about corruption in fact. Corruption is easiest to fight as long as the leadership is not corrupt. With technology, I, I use the example of the Nigerian workforce, for example, you know. Every year, Nigeria is always purging itself of ghost workers. But with technology, do you need to be forging yourself of ghost workers? You just need at the door or the entrance to the office a fingerprint technology or a retina technology. It's, it's, it exists already in banks in Nigeria. So everybody that is coming to work that is officially a worker there, we just use their fingerprint to enter the office. At the end of the week, 
you know who and who came to work and who didn't come to work. That helps you fill out the ghost workers. But they will never do that because they are sharing the money with themselves at the top. So there's a lot of things technology can do. There's, you know, e-procurement, for example. People can bid for contracts without physically being around to see officials because those evil interaction with civil servants in Nigeria is, is 50% of our corruption. I want to go and see your guy at the top. You know, let's meet somewhere. But if you eliminate the interaction, or for instance, if the university needs computer, do they need a contractor to go and buy computers? It's just a matter of ordering it on the Amazon or eBay. You may deliver directly to the university and you share it to whoever. But you see now opening to bidding. Where you can go to office max that cross from. In fact, the university should be selling computer to the public. In the US, I buy my I buy my own laptop from my university where I teach. But the University of Lagos today, if they need computer, they will go and give it to a contractor. Then the contractor will go and buy the computer, and then they will go and buy fake computer. In fact, the contractor may not even know what specs they need. That's the problem in Nigeria. So by the time you eliminate all the middlemen and all these means of engaging in corruption, corruption will be wiped out. And we have a brand new system. Thank you. Um, I've answered more questions than there are plates of food in this house. So, uh, and you know, I've been traveling all day and it's about 11 o'clock here. I guarantee you I have stamina to stand here till tomorrow morning. But I've been advised to take it easy so that you can do proper fundraising, which is why you guys are here tonight. And I've just counted out of all your questions, you only have seven left. Wow. Yes. So we'll just take a short break from answering questions, and I can eat too, right? I just have looked at the table, I haven't seen snacks like before and ever on the table. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, MC, I can, we can take over for now. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. <laughs> and for listening. Take it back. Action! Can I hear you one more time? Take it back. the answers to those questions. Who was excited? Come on, you can show me a little bit more excited. Who's looking forward to a Nigeria that actually works? A Nigeria that you can enter Nigeria from the airport to air conditioning and you can walk through without anybody asking you for anything. Your luggage comes on time, your luggage, conveyor belt's not broken and you, you can actually take a taxi just by, just by leaving the airport. You can take a taxi without fear that the person's going to rob you before you reach your destination. You can leave the airport place without people sticking guns into your car. Who is looking forward to a Nigeria like that? A Nigeria with a difference. A Nigeria with a change. A Nigeria that are at the forefront of technology. A Nigeria that are at the forefront of information. Who is looking forward to a Nigeria like that? I can't hear you all. Who is looking forward? to this process, you heard from the man himself that it's the, it's the influence that we in diaspora are having on the people in Nigeria. The average Nigeria, the average Nigerian, yes, they have the internet when they can charge their phones, that if they're hungry tonight. They've got the internet, they can see the posters around, 
but a lot of people don't take time. I mean, people have seen the social media clips when they, when they do Vox Pops on the street and they ask Nigerians questions. Have you heard some of the answers they give? Have you heard some of the answers they give? Right, so average Nigerians are not really that well informed, are they? And they're relying on the information that we give them in diaspora, so we have the power. AAC? Take it back! AAC? Take it back! Take it back! Action! Okay, so the action comes from you, ladies and gentlemen. The action comes from every single person in this room. You see, you don't realize that you're actually more powerful than you thought before you walked into this room this evening. You have the power to influence several Nigerians in Nigeria just by you making telephone calls and talking to your people. Just by you uploading stuff on your social media because you know more people in Nigeria see this, don't they? And just by you saying to them, if you don't vote for him, I'm not gonna save any money next month. Simple. So you have the power all to do, to make this change happen. So ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to dig deep into our pockets in order for this action to start taking place because it's only by what we put down to influence that figure, that bottom line figure that would be able to make this dream a reality. I am seriously looking forward to going to Nigeria without a hitch. But right now, when I think about going to Nigeria, a million and one questions pop up. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start this evening's fundraising. I have a few things that I would love us to, to bid for. I have a few things that I would love us to bid for. But, um, thank you very much to the people who have already started the process this evening. Can I have a round of applause again for the wonderful people who have started the process? Our VIPs who are sat on the high table, we appreciate you. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, how does it feel to, to be up there? How does it feel to be sitting next to the presidential, the president of Nigeria in 2019? Does it feel good? Wonderful, wonderful. Right, ladies and gentlemen, you all who are sitting here also, I have a treat for you. How would you like it if in 2019, when our aspirant, Mr. Cheryl Chore, actually wins the election, and in 2019, you are his special guest at the inauguration ceremony in Nigeria. How would you like that? Oh, I can hear a few wows. <laughs> Think of it, just picture it, just picture it. How would you like that, ladies and gentlemen? Wow. Wow, right. <laughs> Who would love to fly all the way to Nigeria? I don't know if you choose to go business class, business class first class. And be picked up from the airport in a lovely vehicle of some kind and be taken to the location and to be ushered in. You know in Nigeria, you know how they do protocol. They do, they're very good at protocol, aren't they? Very, very good at protocol. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Especially when they know you've come from, from the UK. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And bowing and lowing and everything. Take your bags. And you are placed at the front, right at the front as a special guest of the president, ladies and gentlemen, I am giving you the opportunity to bid for one of these very sought after positions. So we shall start the bidding for the first ticket because I have a certain number of these tickets for 2019. So we'll start the bidding for the first one at 200 pounds. <sighs> Don't all rush at once now. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, who would like to be there 2019 as a special guest to the president in Nigeria? Come on, ladies and gentlemen, starting at 200 pounds. 200 pounds. Over here. So, what's your name? Adi. Okay, Mr. Adi, you can see yourself sitting there next to the well, looking probably face on at him because you're going to probably sit next to him there. In Nigeria next year, you can see yourself there. I can see you there too. At 200 pounds, anybody willing to go higher than that? So was that a, that was a, was that a, you're going higher than 200? 
I saw I saw it. Did anybody see that? Yeah. I saw that. You want to go higher than 200? Oh, here before you went, don't worry. Anybody going higher than 200? Higher than 200? Any takers higher than 200? Come on, ladies and gentlemen, we have to dig deep. In order to take action, we have to take action with our money. Only with our money can the action be taken. Do we have higher than 200? Going once at 200. Do we have anybody higher than 200? See yourself in Nigeria, 2019 special guest of the president. 2019, 200. Anybody higher than 200? Going twice at 200. I can go a little bit further, just a little bit further than 200. Anybody? Okay, at 200 pounds, can we give a round of applause, please, to Mr. Ade? 200 pounds. You can see. My dear sister over there, and she would be able to take that from you. Okay. AAC. Oh, you've gone quiet now. Ladies and gentlemen, that food gone down too well. AAC. Take it back. Okay, I would like to actually acknowledge the presence of a great woman by the name of Madame Tawa Ouye, and she's the Deputy Woman Leader of AAC UK. Can you please give a round of applause? Can you stand up please? Oh, there she is. Look at this for that lady. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the next item on our list for auctioning tonight I have a calendar, an AAC calendar. And seeing as you're all groundbreaking people here tonight, you can feature on that calendar for, I've got 12 spots, January to December. Just tell me any amount that you'll pay and you'll feature on that calendar for AAC. And it's gonna go viral. Remember, it's going all over the world. You and your family or Anything that you want to submit will be on that calendar and it will be a piece of history. So you can have any spot from January to December. You can, break, you can tell me any amount that you want to take for that. How much could January go for? Let's start with January. Anybody shout out any amount for January? Do you understand what, what we're doing here? It's a calendar for AAC. It's going to be going everywhere across the country, across the world. You can have your picture in there, and it's a piece of history. It's something that will remain forever. You can have your picture in there, starting from January, any takers for January, any amount. Just tell me any amount that you'll pay for January. Yes? We've got a hundred pounds here for that cover. One hundred pounds for January. Can you keep me around the back? April? Who else has to be April? 
Okay, so how much would you like to give for April? We have 200 pounds for April. What's your name, sir? Ifairaya. 200 pounds for April. For me. And what was your name, sir? Mr. Patrick is giving 50 pounds for me. We have June. Okay. Oh. We have 100 pounds for June. What's your name? Miss Corrigan, 100 pounds for June. Okay, sir. We have me. Okay. We have another 100 pounds for me. The other less, a hundred pounds for me. So a hundred fifty pounds for me. Mr. Pedro, 50 pounds. 
Towns, would you like? Can we please give him a round of applause? Okay, also, I have another donation from Miss Divine. Mrs. Divine. And she's donated £100, ladies and gentlemen, please. Okay, August. August. Comrade Joe, are you an August baby? Are you giving me your card? Oh my. Okay, for the for the VIP table, can I have the POS system? The cash. We need to be charging it at the same time, so. The card machine. If you just give me your PIN number, I'll do that. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm okay. not sure I could do that no, here, I'm definitely. Are you sure? Yes, 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 yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please can I have a round of applause for this handsome man, Big Diamond, and he's the son of Comrade Joe. <laughs> okay, can we have a round of applause for Comrade Joe? He's donated 200 pounds for August. You should have given me your card then. <laughs> you want to do August as well? If you can go better than 200. Oh, there's another August there. Yeah, it's got bidding on it. If I go higher. You, you can go higher than 200. I'm not bidding my August. Don't worry, there's other opportunities. There's other opportunities. <laughs> other opportunities. Okay, so done August. September. September. Any fall, babies. Fall, fall, September. 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 Let me just remind this lovely lady here. September. September. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yes, September. Okay, so. On behalf of my two daughters, born in September 6th, I will put in 200 pounds. Wow. Thank you. 
here. Does somebody want to challenge April? more money for AAC to make sure Nigeria has a future that I'll be proud to tell my children, we're going to my children, Nigeria, and they'll say, yeah, mommy, I can't wait. But at the moment, it's not like that. I heard a testimony today of a nine-year-old child who went to the uh, Nigerian High Commission in London, and as usual, who, who's been to the Nigerian High Commission? Please put your hands up. Who's been? Every time you've been to the Nigerian High Commission, who's witnessed fights there? Every time. Who's witnessed fights? Who's witnessed disorganization? Who's witnessed frustration? That's just at the High Commission. Imagine when you get to Nigeria. So the child saw the fights, saw the disorganization, saw the frustration, saw the fact that something that was supposed to happen within a day, they had to stay in London for three days in order to sort something out that should have happened within a few hours. And that child said, Mommy, if Nigeria is going to be like that, then I don't want to go. And that child has never been to Nigeria before. So I think that's a really sad thing for our children to say, oh, they don't want to go there. How are we supposed to keep our legacy alive if our children are not interested in their country and they see this country which does not support anything to do with our children. Ladies and gentlemen, am I lying when I say that this country does not support our children, our African Nigerian children. This country does not support our children. They train their children, but they tell us not to train our children in this country. So we need to build our country in order for our children to be able to enjoy their legacy. So that's the reason why we're doing that.
Any more pictures with up over here? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Okay, the next item, oh, over here, over here for some pictures. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my namesake again is ever so generous because she's donating a further 20,000 on top of the 200 for a picture with the president. Please give her a round of applause. President, sir? Okay, we've got Miss Adiola who's also paying for a picture with the President. Please give a round of applause. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, another piece of history for you to have your hands on. This night, I'm going to ask our presidential aspirants to sign one of these beautiful t-shirts as modeled by this lovely gentleman here and this lovely lady. He's going to sign the back of it in a very beautiful, big signature. So, you can own that and it will be worth money in the future. So. Get your thinking cap on on how much you would like to pay for that piece of history that will be made this night. And the people who have paid for pictures, would you please make your way over to this side here? Because we're going to take the pictures to this place over here now, please. If you've paid, if you've paid for your picture, I've got the list here, by the way. We've got the list of all the people. Please, can you make your way over to this side? We'll take our pictures. So remember, you'll be getting the pictures as a soft copy, so you can use it for social media purposes, and you'll get a hard copy also, I believe. The calendar pictures are not taken. I'll get back to you on that one. Okay, any more pictures for the president? You will see the pictures up? Sorry? Any cost that you can levy. Okay, so... Okay, hold on, sir, hold on. How much is anybody willing to pay for a signed t-shirt by the president this night? You get your t-shirt? And you get it signed, starting from £25 at that. Your t-shirt with a signature, big bold signature at the back. Anybody at £25? £25 for a signed t-shirt? £25? You haven't got your t-shirt, but you might as well have yours with the signature on the back. But this is a special one, it's A-A-C. Okay, so Madame Tawas having a signed t-shirt at 25 pounds. I still have pictures being paid for. I still have pictures being paid for, Dr. Kiki. So can you please help me with this lovely lady over here? Please. She's paying for a picture, please. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you please to have a seat in the Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please, if you've taken your pictures, please can you have your seats? Please. Just so we can do this in an orderly fashion. Please have your seats. We're not done yet. We will be done in the next few minutes, but we're not done yet. So please have your seats if you've taken your pictures. Of course, the VIP table, you will be taking your pictures. VIPs. Well, guys, guys, guys. Guys, guys. Guys, can we please wait? Can we just please wait for the guy to explain the official photographer to take? Is that what we're trying to do? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please, can I ask everybody to have a seat for me, please? Okay, fine. Well, I, I, are you taking pictures? Okay, let him take a picture, no problem. Just wait. Emma Bolek Please have a seat. Please. Have a seat. Let's do this all the way. Let's just do this all the way. Just wait. Go through the back. Go through the back. Go through the back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's standing here. Can we all take a look at this? Did you take it? Okay, is there anybody who paid for their picture? Are you taking your pictures? Has everybody who paid for their picture taken their picture? Take your picture. Take your picture. Thank you. 